Just uh, in summary, first of all, we're not coming out saying that uh, um, you know video is is the best or direct is the best, etc. It's really about understanding what you use um, and making sure that whatever you use, you use it well. Um, I think there were about four points, four or five points, and I'll, I'll quickly summarize them um, that, that that came out uh, that we tried to articulate in this uh, in this post. Um, I guess the first one, just to put to rest, I don't think that the Cochrane review is is uh, you know evidence to to bury any device, um, including the direct laryngoscope. Um, I'm not going to talk any more about that. Um, that that uh, our interpretation um, and was that if you look at the review in in a bit more detail that the 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 benefit there is it does seem to be uh, benefit of Macintosh video laryngoscopy over direct laryngoscopy and over um, uh, hypercute angled blade video laryngoscopy. This is just a side plea that we need to be a bit more sophisticated in, in describing these devices. This is a video laryngoscope blade, um, a Macintosh. This is a hyperacute angled blade video uh, laryngoscope. This is a channeled blade. And, you know, theoretically, um, this is a video laryngoscope. In other words, it's got a distal camera and a proximal um, screen. Um, that allows you to visualize the larynx. But obviously all of these are, are different devices and they're used differently. So we need to be a bit more sophisticated in how we describe these devices. So there seems to be some benefit of Macintosh video laryngoscopy over, uh, over direct and hypercute angled blade video laryngoscopy. And I guess the third point, which is really the mechanical discussion that we, we get into, is that um, problem solving using a hypercute angled blade video laryngoscope um, can be boiled down to essentially in using it more like a direct laryngoscope. Now let me make a, a quick statement. I'm not talking about the fact that when you use this device you're going to be able to look in directly and see the glottic inlet. What I mean in terms of blade positioning and camera positioning, you're more likely to be successful um, when the blade and the camera is aligned in the same axis um, as, the, uh, as, as the trachea, as opposed to what most of us have done historically is to try to achieve the best view um, of the glottic inlet. And achieving the best view of the glottic inlet was intuitive, right? Um, the more you can see with direct laryngoscopy, the more likely you are to place the endotracheal tube. Um, in a timely manner. That's not the case when you use a, a, a hypercute angle blade. Um, when you use a hypercute angle blade and you get a full view of the larynx, what this means is that you probably have over rotated the device. You've over rotated the device, and in essence, you're looking up at the glottic inlet. You're looking up at the glottic inlet, um, and uh, um, the camera is directed so that what you're able to see when you look through the glottis, the glottic inlet, you're able to see the anterior wall of the trachea and often the, the tracheal rings. Great view, but essentially what this means is that the trajectory of the endotracheal tube now um, is, is more perpendicular um, to the, the trachea. And that makes it a problem and redirecting it down the trachea. And what uh, John's comment was in, in his uh, um, uh, piece on the, uh, um, after the post on EM Crit was um, that again, there are these you know, opposing angles. There's the view angle, which is up, and then the natural lie of the trachea, which runs from a superior um, anterior position to um, a posterior inferior position, right? And that's opposing that, that view. So these, the, it's been described as these two opposing C's you can read elsewhere. It's been talked about. Um, one of the problems of getting 
the two problems about being too close is one is if this is your your trachea here when you are too close actually you're actually levering often the larynx and you can uh, um, essentially move it more anterior and as you can see that that produces more of a perpendicular trajectory through the glottic inlet, which is going to be hard to uh, hard to manage. Um, secondly, um, is uh, you know when again when you're over rotated like this and and looking up, it leaves very little space back here to to manipulate your 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 endotracheal tube. Um, and uh, and that can be uh, that that can be um, an issue. And ideally, what you want to do is now people talk about it, and John talked about that here. There's ways you can you can manage endotracheal tube hold up on the anterior trachea. Two ways are one is to is to uh, um, pull the stylet out by about two to four centimeters and that creates a soft tip that will allow it to uh, um, go down the trachea hopefully. The other thing you can do is rotate the tube, assume this, this is the tube, um, to the right or clockwise in this direction and what that does is that puts the, the trajectory of the tube in the same axis as the, uh, as the uh, um, trachea as opposed to it being in an axis like this it's going to go up and hit it anteriorly. Secondly what it does is it takes the bevel from this position right to this position um, as you rotate it to the right again um, and that will often take the tracheal tube off the anterior wall of the trachea which is it's often getting hold, held up on the, on the rings. I do have a, a, a piece on our, on our uh, a website called Twist and Shout and describes the you know problem solving with the uh, with stylet use and with bougie use in terms of which way you rotate the, the tube. Um, but the better way to manage or the initial way to manage difficulty isn't with modifying your your approach with your endotracheal tube. It's about modifying your approach with the the scope. So what you want to do and and what I mean by making it behave more like a a direct uh, uh, laryngoscope is that with a direct laryngoscope you are aligning the axes and in essence what you want to do is align this hyperangulated portion with the long axis of the, of the trachea so you are instead look instead of looking up at pink you're looking down the long axis of the trachea and that will allow you to uh, use a more favorable uh, bend on your endotracheal tube which is probably about a 60 to 70 degree bend and it won't get hung up um, uh, on the uh, on the anterior wall so pulling back um, and and compensating for that over rotation so come back and and uh, um, correct your your rotation so it's in in this uh, position if you're looking down the uh, down the trachea, so the trachea will look as a black hole. Um, and uh, one of the ways, at least with the glide scope, to know that you're probably in that proper trajectory is when you're looking at the screen, we call it the rule, 50-50 uh, rule, is that you've got a pogo view of less than 50%, um, and, and uh, the, the glottis occupies the top 50% of the screen, and the epiglottis is in is is visualized essentially hugging the very top of the screen, and if you if you do that, that will essentially um, force you to pull back and uh, correct uh, that over rotation. Now that won't give you the best view of the glottic inlet, but that's the desired view. So again, uh, a uh, bit of a, a lengthy uh, commentary. Um, but uh, thank you for uh, the feedback and, um, you know, happy laryngoscopy, whatever you choose.